Uh, today we're going to take a look at some inverse functions. Um, and before I go through a couple of examples, I want to just uh, review some basic general information about inverses. Um, one thing is that uh, you should remember that by interchanging your x and your y values, then you can form an inverse function. All right, so I've got a real little example here. Um, if they tell you to find the inverse of f and they give you a set of ordered pairs there as your function, you can generate that inverse function as simply just by reversing your x and y in each one of those ordered pairs. Okay. Now, understanding that being able to create an inverse function like that, then you should then realize that the domain of f is the range of the inverse function and vice versa. All right, that will be a good important fact to remember when moving forward in calculus using inverse functions. Um, you also uh, hopefully remember that the way that you prove two inverse functions is that you have to show that um, f of the inverse of x um, can be simplified down to x and the reverse is also true the inverse of f the inverse of f f of x uh, can be simplified down to x and that's generally shown algebraically usually in a two column type process um, another important thing you want to remember is that the graphs of your um, function and the inverse function are reflections of each other across that y equals x line. I've done a really rough sketch here to indicate that. There's the y equals x line. My blue function right there would be my original function. All right, A reflection across that y equals x line would be the red line and that would indicate that I've got an inverse function there. All right, so uh, four pretty uh, general information facts you know, about inverse functions. All right, um, taking a look at a little bit more here with reviewing inverse functions before we start our examples. Um, we, you should also recall that not every function is going to have an inverse function. All right, and then um, the horizontal line test is a really good thing to remember. All right, if you can graph the function or sketch it really quickly, then you can use that horizontal line test to determine whether or not the function has an inverse. All right, and then I did state the horizontal line test right here. A function has an inverse function a function that is an inverse, if and only if every horizontal line intersects the graph of f along, um, only once. All right, very, very similar to the vertical line test, except it's a horizontal line. Um, the last thing that I want to make sure you remember is um, there's a theorem talks about the existence of an inverse. All right, the first part of that theorem states that a function has an inverse function if and only if it is one to one. Second part of it is if f is strictly monotonic on its entire domain, then it's one to one, and therefore it would have an inverse function. Okay, so just a few facts on inverse functions that you probably should recall before you start working with them. All right, for my first uh, example here, I would like to show that um, the two functions f of x and g of s x are inverse functions. All right, so you're probably going to be given two functions, an f of x function and a g of x function. All right, and recalling um, how you do that, you're going to uh, put the g of x function inside the f function and then simplify it algebraically and see if you can simplify down to an x. All right, you will create a second column and on that one you will put the f of x function inside the g function and see if you can algebraically simplify it down to an x. All right, so um, to give myself a little guide here on my first column, I am going to do f of g of x. All right, that tells me, reading function notation, that I'm going to take this g function and I'm going to put it inside the f function every place that there is an x. All right, so I'm going to add that 2 on the outside. All right, I'm going to take the g function there, put it on the inside. So cube root of x plus 1 over 2, and that is cubed, and then minus 1. So on that first step, the only thing I did, I took the g of function and put it inside the f function right there. All right, now I'm going to take a look at this, and um, I'm going to start simplifying algebraically. I see a cube root and something being cubed. Those two things are inverse operations. They will cancel. That's going to simplify then down to a 2 times x plus 1 all over 2 and then minus one. All right, basic algebra here. I can cross out the twos at that point, and then I'll be left with an x plus one minus one. Okay, and one minus one there, that's going to simplify out and cross out 
then therefore I have been able to simplify f of g of x all the way down algebraically to just a plain x. All right, now I'm going to reverse that process. I'm going to put the f function inside the g function and see if I can do the exact same thing, in which case then I know I will have uh, proved that these two are inverse functions. All right, so for uh, my title here on my second column, g of f of x. All right, that tells the person that's looking at your paper what you're doing here. I'm going to take the f function and I'm going to put it inside the g function. So I'm going to take this 2x to the third minus 1 and I'm going to substitute it in here everywhere where I see an x. All right, so to do that I'm going to have a great big huge cube root. All right, and in for that x right there I'm going to put the f function. So I would have a 2x to the third minus 1 and then the plus 1 which is in the original function. All right, all over 2. All right, now I'm going to start solving this algebraically. Okay, underneath that uh, cube root there, I've got a minus 1 to plus 1. Those two things are going to cross out first. Uh, rewriting that, I will have the cube root then of 2x to the third all over 2. All right, those 2s are going to simplify, both as coefficients there. Okay, uh, cube root then of x to the third. All right, cube root and something being cubed then will cross out. So those two things are going to cross out. All right, leaving me with just an x. All right, so I have showed algebraically both ways on how these simplify down to x. Therefore, I know that f of x and g of x are inverse functions. Um, you might even want to write a concluding sen sentence there saying something like, therefore, um, since uh, f of g of x equals x and g of f of x equals x, then by the definition of inverses, or by the definition of inverse functions, that might even be better, f of x and g of x are inverses. All right, that's you know indicating a little therefore statement there is um, really definitely formal mathematics right there. All right, now um, one more example dealing with um, inverse functions. All right, let's suppose that they are um, ask you to actually find the inverse function of some some function that you are given. All right, now on this one, what I did, um, just to set up here some little uh, steps that will help you remember how to go about doing this. All right, especially if they give you the function in f of x notation, all right, you're going to want to replace that f of x with a y first. All right, then you are going to want to exchange your x and your y. You're going to want to solve for y, and then as your last step, then you'll rewrite that using function notation. All right, so um, step one says to replace f of x with y, so I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go y equals the square root of 4x minus 3. All right, next step says exchange x and y. So I'm just going to literally exchange them. So I'll put the x over here, and I will write that as the square root of 4y minus 3. All right, and then... Um, from here, this next step, solving for y, is going to be a variety of different things um, that you can do to solve for y. On this one, I think I'm going to square both sides. That'll get rid of the square root there. All right, then I will have an x squared equals 4y minus 3. I can add 3 to both sides, and I'll have an x squared plus 3 equals 4y. And my last step there would be then dividing both sides by 4. So x squared plus 3 divided by 4 equals y. All right, so technically right there is my inverse function. But I do want to then write it using actually good function notation here. If my original function is called f, my inverse function, f of minus 1 there of x. So the inverse function of f would be x squared plus 3 all over 4. All right, so um, second example there, just showing how to actually find the inverse of a function.